and says for meaning page 25. That time blood rushed to my head because I had to listen to a man judge my life who had so little idea of it, a man. I must confess the following remark, which I made to my fellow prisoners after the scene afforded me childish relief, who looked so vulgar and brutal that the nurse in an outpatient ward in my hospital would not even have admitted him to the waiting room. Fortunately, the Cape Bay, my working party, was obliged to me. He had taken a liking in me because I listened to his love stories and matrimonial troubles, which he poured out during the long marches to our work site. I had made an impression on him with my diagnosis of his character and with my psychotherapeutic advice. After that, he was grateful, and this already had been of value to me. On several previous occasions, he had reserved a place for me next to him in one of the first rows of our detachment, which usually consisted of 280 men. That favor was important. We had to line up early in the morning while it was still dark. Everybody was afraid of being late and of having to stand in the back rows. If men were required for an unpleasant and disliked job, the senior caper appeared and usually collected the men he needed from the back rows. These men had to march away to another especially dreaded kind of work under the command of strange guards. Occasionally, the senior caper chose men from the first five rows just to catch those who tried to be clever. All protests and treaties were silenced by a few well-aimed kicks, and the chosen victims were chased to the meeting place for shouts and blows. However, as long as my capo felt the need of pouring out his heart, this could not happen to me. I had a guaranteed place of honor next to him. But there was another advantage too, like nearly all the camp inmates, I was suffering from edema. My legs were so swollen and the skin on them so tightly stretched that I could scarcely bend my knees. I had to leave my shoes unlaced in order to make them fit my swollen feet. There would have been space for socks even if I had even if I had any. So my partly bare feet were always wet, and my shoes always full of snow. This, of course, caused frostbite and child blindness. Every single step, real torture. Clumps of ice formed on our shoes during our marches over snow-covered fields. Over and again, men slipped and those following behind stumbled on top of them. Then the column would stop for a moment, but not for long. One of the guards soon took action and worked over the men with the butt of his rifle to make them get up quickly. The more to the front of the column you were, the less often you were disturbed by having to stop and then to make up for lost time by running on your painful feet. I was very happy to be personally, to be the personally appointed position to his honor the caper and to march in the first row at an even pace. As an additional payment for my services, I could be sure that as long as soup was being dealt out at lunchtime at our work site, he would, when my turn came, dip the ladle right down to the bottom of the vat and fish out a few peas. This capo, former armor officer, even had the courage to whisper to the foreman, whom I had quarreled with, that he knew me to be an unusually good worker. That didn't help matters, but he nevertheless managed to save my life, one of the many times it was to be saved. The day after the episode, where the foreman, he smuggled me into another work party. 